The season after Epiphany is a season that forms a bridge from Christmas, the Incarnation, when we celebrate the birth of God's love in the world, to Lent, when we begin to look at the journey of suffering that leads to the cross and then eventually to resurrection and Easter. And so in the season of Epiphany, we are focusing on the ordinary everyday life of Jesus, his teachings and the things that he did and the places he went and the people that he met and knew and the way that he's teaching all of us how to live a life of faith as we too work to dismantle systems of oppression and bring forth God's love in the world in our time. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, our desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. In the temple of the Lord, all are saying, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in, this, in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt about his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, 
I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit ascending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, my Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today is the day that the Church celebrates the baptism of Jesus. It was determined to be celebrated every year on the second Sunday in January, and so it conflates a little bit with what we would normally be celebrating, which is the Epiphany. So we have a little bit of the Epiphany today and a little bit of the baptism of Jesus. But our readings in particular reflect on the baptism of Jesus. And so there are many implications to consider about Jesus and his baptism. Each of the four Gospels have a slightly different way of describing the events of that baptism. And one might wonder, what is the importance of baptism? And why was Jesus baptized? Why was it important for Jesus to be baptized? According to Cyril, who was a 4th century bishop of Jerusalem, early Christians believed that water was the beginning of the world and that the River Jordan, which is where Jesus was baptized, that the River Jordan was where the gospel message of love and hope for the world began. It came out of those waters in the baptism of Jesus. These ancient Christians of the 3rd and 4th century believed that baptism returned people to paradise, to the beauty of the Garden of Eden, and to the original intention of God for all of humankind. The oldest survi surviving Christian baptistry dates back to the 3rd century in a town in Syria. It was a shallow square pool in a private house. In those days, there were no designated church buildings like we have now. Worshiping communities met in private homes. So, of course, the baptismal font was also in a home. The walls around the pool are painted with Christian images images of the paralytic carrying his bed on his back before Jesus healed him, images of Peter and Jesus walking on water, of Adam and Eve and the Good Shepherd leading them back to paradise, and a procession of women carrying torches as they walked to the tomb of Jesus. It's a prophetic set of images telling the Christian story and what we believe God is doing in and through the world, in and through Jesus, in and through us. And in particular, these images convey the idea that in baptism, we are restored to paradise. So here's a few of those images. You can take a look at them. Paradise is the image we have of God's original intention for creation and humankind, that we live whole and healthy lives in a beautiful garden of creation. This no notion of restoration is echoed in today's reading in Isaiah. Just as the people of Israel are restored from their exile, as Isaiah tells us, back to the land of promise, so too are all people restored to God's love. And for Christians, we ritualize this act of restoration and love in baptism and Holy Communion. The ancient preparation for baptism, called catechism, prepared people to leave behind one way of living and enter into a new life of love and hope. When I prepare parents and godparents for baptism of an infant or a child, I always ask them to think about how they intend to raise this child. What are the values and beliefs that will shape this child for their life? When the child is going to be raised as part of a faith community, attending church and learning and growing in faith along the way, the children learn these values as part of our shared life. But sometimes people want their children baptized not so much because they want to raise the child in a faith community, but because the ritual of baptism is part of the family tradition. It's what's done. In these cases, I encourage the parents to really think about their role in the child's life, and in particular, how they will teach the child to navigate life's challenges 
and make decisions. What are the values and beliefs that the parents will teach this child? How will this child know what is evil, harmful, and what is healing and whole? How will the child understand the value of working to create conditions for wholeness for all people? I ask them to think about Christian values in the context of their lives, that Jesus lived to dismantle systems of oppression in his day, and we are called to do the same in our lives and our day. We are called to work for justice. In our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter reinforces this idea that God loves all people. And in the Gospel reading this morning, we hear that in baptism, God defines who Jesus is. Likewise, in our baptism, we are given our identity as Christians. With every baptism, we renew our baptismal covenant. This covenant is between each one of us and God. In it, we renounce the evil forces that play in the world and affirm our commitment to love as God loves. In it, we promise to continue to learn and grow as human beings. We learn about the ways we might inadvertently contribute to the brokenness of this world through actions and beliefs that support systems of oppression, for example, like racism, sexism, or economic disparity. These are the evils and sins, or some of the evils and sins of our world today, which we renounce. We promise to share, to care for others, and respect the dignity of every human being. These are some of the values that we inherit as Christians that define us and how we are to live our lives. And baptism is deeply connected to Holy Communion. Many believe that one must be baptized first before receiving communion. Others believe that one can come to the Holy Table and to these sacraments in either order, communion and then baptism, baptism and then communion. The point of it all is to ensure that we are aware of the depth and breadth of these Holy Sacraments, these outward expressions of God's grace that is active in us and in the world. Every week, Holy Communion reminds us of our baptism, of the Christian story, of what God intends for creation in and through the life of Jesus, and then in and through our lives. Listen carefully to that story. It is slightly different each season of the liturgical year, at least that's how we do it here. And so now in the season after Epiphany, we are telling the story through Eucharistic Prayer B, that's what it's called, Prayer B, and it's found in the Book of Common Prayer. The Episcopal Church offers a wide variety of options for Eucharistic prayers, and each offers us a different way of hearing the story of what God is doing in creation. We call this our salvation history, how God is saving the world from the forces that try to pull creation and pull us away from God. Baptism gives us our identity as Christians and defines for us the values that help us navigate life in ways that work with God to restore the wholeness to the world. Holy Communion is the weekly reminder of this narrative with a shared meal that invites everyone to the table and a clear sign that all are loved by God. Let us pray together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and, and the world. For peace between all nations and people, for those serving in harm's way. Especially for... We offer our prayers. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For, For the, the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For, For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our preceding bishop. For Bonnie, our bishop, and for our clergy, we offer our prayers. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray in thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, for all ministers, lay and ordained. We offer our prayers. For all who serve God and church, We pray for all who have died, especially and we pray for these from our family and friends. We pray that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them. Who, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. you. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, especially, and now I invite you to refer to the parish bulletin for the names of the people in the parish that we are praying for, and to also add those from your family and friends. We pray for those for whom healing has begun. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of tur turbulence there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from this central peace there may come a creative compassion, a thirst for justice, and a willingness to give of ourselves in the spirit of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you, in you and us, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. No, 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 be. Oh. Uh -huh.
May Christ bright star enlighten your mind and heart as you strive for equality, justice, and kindness in the world. For life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life, be with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.